Hi everybody, this is Chris from ChristopherJ.net and this is my next lesson in my bass lesson series number DB15 on how to read music otherwise known as real 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 basic music theory. So I've got my DAW open here, uh, Logic, and um, I'm just going to step through the basics of reading music um, and uh, show you some different examples on my screen. Um, what you see now is, um, so I'm going to explain how music is notated. Um, we use a thing called a staff, which is basically just a grid, five lines, um, with little dots on it. And what I'm showing now is the treble staff, which is the most commonly seen music, uh, or the most commonly seen staff in music. Um, and it, begins with a, a little uh, curly Q thing on the, the left end um, and that's called the treble clef and uh, I believe it's also called the G clef because the little circle circles the line which is the note G on that staff. Stepping down for us bass players this is what we use and it's the bass clef also called the F clef because the two dots um, are around the line which is the note F on the bass staff. And then of course there's the thing called the grand staff which piano players use and perhaps some other instruments uh, like organs and things that have a really big range and that is a combination of the bass staff and the and the treble clef staff all together connected by one big bracket. Next thing that I want to go over are the names of the notes as they appear on the staff. So this first um, example shows you the names of the notes that appear in the spaces in between each line. This is on the bass clef. So the first one is A, followed by C, then E, and G. And you can use, I'm sure there's many different uh, mnemonic devices out there that people have come up with. I guess a common one that I've heard is all cows eat grass. And then there are the names of the notes on the lines. And here we have G for the very bottom line, followed by B, D, F, and A. And that could spell good basis, do fine, always. I think when I was a kid, it was good boys, do fine, always. That may not be politically correct, but it's a good phrase if you're a boy. And then the next one I have here just shows all the all the note names together, um, going two octaves, starting on low E. And this is how it would sound if you played it. So it goes E F G A B C. Just do the alphabet. D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, all the way up. And we only use seven letters. We stop at G and then start all over again on A. But this is how it would sound. <laughs> next thing to talk about is time value of notes. So music is composed of both uh, pitch elements and rhythm or timing. So what you see here is called a whole note. It's basically a big a big circle um, and it's worth in 4-4 in time where there's four beats 
to one measure and a measure is shown by the little vertical line so that note is made up of four beats and uh, I have the metronome turned on so you can hear the the beat divisions it would sound like this oh sorry I forgot to turn off the other track we'll go down here and start over here's how it should sound for a whole note And then the whole note can be divided into smaller divisions. If you divide it in half, you get a half note. Oh, before we get to that, along with a whole note, there's a thing called a whole rest. So music is made up of both sound and silence. And when you have silence in the notation, we show it with a different symbol, which means don't play, basically. And that's called a rest. So for a whole note, it has a corresponding whole rest. And it looks like that. So it's a little square that hangs from the second line down. And I don't really, I don't know, I don't have a really good way, a memory device for um, a whole rest. If you do, let me know. Okay, moving on, now we have the half note. So remember we had the whole note, now we're going to divide that in two. Take your little knife, chop it in half, you get a half note. Half note looks like that. So it's not quite as dark of a circle, but it's a circle with a line. An open circle is the key. It's not all colored in. See? So an open circle with a stem is a half note. And in four, four time, where there's four beats per measure, a half note is worth two beats. Half as many as a whole note. And a half note on the double bass sounds like this. Okay. And then with the half note, there is the corresponding half rest. And this one I always had an easier time to remember. It looks like that another little square and just like the half note there can be no more than two half rests per measure as you see here and the way I remembered the half rest was somebody told me think of it as a hat it looks like a little hat sitting on the shelf so and both hat half begin with H and they kind of sound the same so there you go, a half rest. And then if you divide a half note, or a half rest, in half again, what do you get? This is a math question, a word problem. Oh. Right, a quarter. Half of a half is a quarter. And so you have the quarter note. And it looks like that. So it's a solid dot on the line, or in space, it can be anywhere, with a stem. So solid dot with a line is a quarter note. And in 4-4 four, four time, there's four quarter notes per measure. And that's what 4-4 four, four means. 4 means a quarter note. So a quarter note gets one beat, and there's four beats, four quarter notes, measure. And a quarter note played in time, and I have my metronome just in case you want to know, 
uh, set for 80 beats per measure or per minute and it would sound like this <laughs> That's the quarter note, and here is the quarter rest. And I can't play it because all we would be playing is silence, right? That's the metronome. But if you see a, a rest anywhere in your music, that means you do not play for that amount of time. So a quarter rest looks like this funny little thing. It's like a, uh, if you ever did calligraphy with those, uh, with the blank, black ink and the, the funny pens, you can visualize making that little squiggle. So that vertical squiggle means it's a quarter rest. So there you go. And if you divide a quarter note or quarter rest in a half, again, that becomes what's half of a quarter give up it becomes an eighth one eighth and an eighth note is similar to a quarter note but it looks like this um, and I didn't put a uh, an individual one if it was by itself it would have just a little flag which looks like this I wonder if I can put it on here That doesn't work. But uh, over on the left side of my screen, I've got it highlighted in blue. An individual eighth note looks like that, with one little flag hanging off the stem. Actually, I can I can add that right now. that is an individual eighth note and the eighth notes played in time with the metronome sound like this should be twice as fast as a quarter note <laughs> count it so with a quarter note there's four quarter notes per measure and that's pretty obvious it's if you want to count along to help keep your um, keep your time one two three four with eighth notes you would count one and two and three and four and with the and being the notes in between the downbeats and then an eighth rest looks like that. You should be able to get this by now. If you divide an eighth note or an eighth rest in half, what do you get? Those. Lots of dots. It's called a sixteenth note. And that's twice as many per beat as an eighth note. So instead of eight beats per measure, the 16th note, obviously you get 16 per measure. Count them up. And when they're barred, like the eighth notes were before, instead of one horizontal bar across, uh, we have two, like that. And an individual sixteenth note, similar to the individual eighth note, looks like that. So it's got a solid dot with a stem and two flags, similar to the bars. There's two bars, two flags.
So that's a sixteenth note. And if you divide that in half again, I don't have it shown, you would have thirty-second note. Um, you don't see a lot of that in, in bass music occasionally. But I won't bore you with that because there's a lot of information here for you to uh, digest anyway. And the sixteenth note is twice as fast as those eighth notes, and here's how it sounds. <laughs> sixteenth rest looks like that. So remember the the rest and eighth rest look like this with the uh, kind of a little dot a diagonal line and then another diagonal line going down. Well the sixteenth just has two of those little curly Q things. And if it was a 30-second um, rest, it would have three of these little lines like that. So that's um, pretty much the basics of uh, how to read music. I'll show you what uh, how they compare all together on one page, the music. Um, that's not it. There we go. Well, this is kind of a mess, but it gives you the idea. I guess I didn't plan this part out real well, but you can see how they compare. So here you have. Whole note, whole rest, half note, half rest, quarter note, and then my screen's a mess down here. But you can see kind of through the, the mess, there's the, uh, the quarter notes and um, quarter rest. So, um, sorry about that. I tried to find a, uh, a better uh, printout of this and put it on the page along with this video. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.